there, there is an important part of the ICC's case that has to be taken into account, which is the gap between the direct perpetrators, those who mm -hmm. actually commit the killings, mm -hmm. and the indirect yep. co-perpetrators, those mm -hmm. who order or enable the killings. Now, that gap is one of the most important gaps that require evidence, require analysis, but ultimately may be addressed by some of the statements of the president of the Philippines that are already referred to in the request. Well, that's yes, what... I can imagine what you're, you're referring to, all, all the statements made publicly by the president. But at the same time, uh, the president and Malacanang has always used the backup that uh, uh, never take a president literally. Uh, I don't know how that, that counts in, in this particular case. Eh? When, when you look at tying, tie, tie, making the case between, uh, between SPO1 and the uh, commander-in-chief, uh, how, 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 how concrete does that have to be? Well, two things. First, he's the president. He's head of state. And international law applies to the ICC just as it applies to the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea Arbitration Proceedings. Statements of heads of state are actually have, have, have legal weight in international law. Uh, mm -hmm. You can discount them by claiming that they were joking or that you know, they, 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 they don't even have to be coherent statements. Uh, they don't even have to be complete sentences. They don't even have to be uttered in logical ways. But they are going to have a legal effect on in proceedings before the ICC. But on the other hand, he keeps qualifying his statements, right? And that's the defense of the administration. That there is no, it's a crime, crimes against humanity. There is no state policy and there is no systematic movement to 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 carry out ejk's that's what they're saying so if the president says oh patayin niyo yan patayin niyo yan and then later he says ang sinasabi ko lang naman eh papatayin niyo kapag pag lumaban and defense. Oh. that's what he keeps saying <laughs> so right, but paano yan? and there's no written order although there was a rumor at the start of the administration that there was actually a written order of course, I well, doubt if that will ever surface. Pero pa paano yung kapag ganun? Well, there, there's, there, there are a couple of considerations here that might be helpful. Um, the ICC, in some cases, relies on what, what have been called insider witnesses. People who actually are involved, were involved in the commission of the crime to an extent that they can testify about not just what they, not just their participation in the crime, but the connection to higher officials uh, in the commission of the crime. So insider witnesses are important, and we have reason to believe that there are insider witnesses that are available to the court. Uh, the president's statements, he, he can qualify, like I said, he can, he can even deny, but denials and qualifications do not take away the fact that he made these statements. Now, what the, the important con the important fact here is to consider the consequences of the statements. If nothing happened after he orders people to kill, after he encourages policemen to execute, after he tells people to arm themselves and commit extrajudicial killings, then there's no consequence. There's there's no crime. Uh, incitement to crimes against humanity is in fact not a crime uh, under the Rome Statute, but incitement that leads to killing. The crime isn't the incitement. The crime is the killing. And therefore, these statements contributed to that and may constitute direct, indirect co-perpetration by those who make those statements.